Anine, hi all. Thanks for joining me again today for another Indigenous hybrid author video. As some of you may know, I am an author and illustrator from the Red Lake Nation of Anishinaabe here in northern Minnesota. Today I'm coming to you from Onigamising, also known as Duluth, Minnesota. So today I wanted to do a video on the updates and news in the Indigenous literary world and then also do some updates on my own projects. So first off, yesterday was Multicultural Children's Book Day. The mission of MCBD is to not only raise awareness for the kids' books that celebrate diversity, but to get more of these books into classrooms and libraries. If you'd like to explore the books and their creators, you can go to this website and check it all out there. Gigi and the Wolves was included in the celebration yesterday and that included reviews by like librarians, teachers. Some of the copies of the books of Gigi are then being donated to classrooms, I believe it is, which is pretty cool. So I'm sure that a lot of you have heard this fantastic news. Michaela Goad, I believe, please forgive me if I'm saying your name wrong, just recently won the 2021 Caldecott Medal for the illustrations in We Are Water Protectors, a book written by Carol Lindstrom. Congratulations to you too, Carol. Amazing. The book is beautiful. If you haven't read it yet, please go and check it out. So in other news, I recently read this really touching article about a young man named Joshua Heath who has recently put out a book of poetry called Shopping Cart Boy, Poems of My Life. So what I learned from this story about him and his work is that he went into the foster care system when he was a baby and by the age of like 12 he was in at least like 13 homes, right? And he wrote this book of poetry to share his experiences. So yeah, go check that book out. Okay, so an upcoming event on February 10th is the virtual launch of Heart Drum, which is an imprint of HarperCollins Publishing. This is pretty exciting because it's a native curated imprint for children's literature, which is pretty fantastic. And I'm excited to see what comes out of Heart Drum. If you would like to attend that online celebration, you can go to birchbarkbooks.com and that is Wednesday, February 10th at 7 p.m. Central Time and you just got to register for the event and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so quick update on my projects. I've been doing a lot of work on my cookbook. I've been up to my chin in my Newman flower, which is awesome. So I had some setbacks, you know, COVID, but I'm really excited about this book. I have lots of cool pictures of, you know, wild plants. I've been collecting pictures of wild plants for years, and I'm just really excited to wrap that up soon and hopefully see that published this fall. Okay, so kind of a cool and like really, for me, like really exciting and like a big news thing for my publishing press, not too far removed press. I recently had a phone conference with a up-and-coming native distributor and I'm excited to get on board with them and have our books distributed by them so that's gonna be pretty cool I'll tell you more when I know more oh so some other cool news Abalone Mountain Press is having a poetry contest and they are a new press I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of that press as well and if you want to check out that poetry contest please do that so my other big project that I've been working on, Native Love Jams, as some of you may know, is a romantic comedy. I've been posting some threads on my Facebook page about this book and I've been getting some pretty good like responses from people. So I kind of, I just want to read some of that right now. So I was asking people like what their comfortability is with like the heat level in a romance. So, you know, like, a sweet romance where maybe there's kissing um, but that's it you know there doesn't even have to be kissing in a sweet romance as long as the two main characters like fall in love two or more you know however many are in your story or like a moderate level where you know there's a little bit more going on or like a spicy level where you know there's like no holds bars right no holds barred yes that is the phrase, 80s wrestling. Okay, I was a big 80s wrestling fan. You, I mean, you guys saw the Bushwhackers, right? Oh, oh. So some of the responses I got to, right? What is the heat level that you're comfortable with? 
because it really matters to me, right? And so one person said, normalizing indigenous love includes sex. Go as far as your heart and your story needs to go. I like it. Um, the same person actually commented again to anyone who might go off the deep end and say anything negative about this. I know and have heard my whole life, even from Kewain Ziyug, that Mendem humor is the worst and raunchiest of all. So these conversations are being had in dance halls, ceremony, etc. Don't let anyone tell you different. You guys know, you know what she's talking about. And she goes on, as a fellow writer, that might also make a fun play. Everyone at the dance hall talking about so-and-so when they walk in because they heard that sexual tea about so-and-so. <clears throat> and finally, as some of you know, I recently created a GoFundMe to help support the Native Love Jams project. And so far we've raised over $1,100. So thank you all so much. And thanks for hanging out with me today and hopefully having a laugh and learning about some of the cool and positive things that are going on with the indigenous literary world in 2021. Kegawabamen, Minawa, Nagaj, Miigwech.